What if I told you that you could have your suede Birkenstocks cleaned in just five steps? Stick around to the end of this video and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so taupe suede is one of the most popular <laughs> suedes right now. It's the light beige color. And I just kind of want to show you what will happen to those if you don't maintain them. So all of my examples that I have in front of me are obliterated. <laughs> but I, you really need to understand that when you own a pair of taupe suede Birkenstocks, how you got them to begin with, they're not gonna stay looking like that. Now, one thing that you really, 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 really need to do is you need to invest in either the Birkenstock cleaning kit, a Scotch Guard, or we also have Weather Guard, which is really awesome too. Um, and we'll show you all of those, or how about the links below. But you wanna make sure that you're preventing stuff from happening. Prevention is going to be like 90% of your life when you own a pair of taupe suede. I mean, this is a this is a worn pair of taupe suede. It's a pretty significant stain that is on this shoe that could have mostly been prevented um, had the shoes been treated with something like the water and stain repellent from Birkenstock or Weather Guard, something along those lines. Again, links are going to be down in the description. Yeah, this this was once this. <laughs> This is what can happen to the toe suede. It no longer looks like a toe suede. It almost looks like the mocha suede. And so this is a great option if you're wanting a suede that's a neutral color. These shoes have definitely seen better days. <laughs> if you're wanting your um, suede to stay looking nice, um, but you don't want to have to do a whole lot of maintenance, go for something darker. Remember that suede require a lot of TLC to maintain the longevity of the straps. Okay, let's pause for just one second. If you're doing all right, and this has been helpful, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave that question below and I'll answer it as soon as I can. Thanks. All right, let's go over all of the tools and products that you're gonna need in order to maintain and clean your taupe suede Birkenstocks or your suedes. Today we're gonna be focusing on taupe suede. It is a lighter suede. The pair that was provided to me for this video is not a well-worn pair of Birkenstocks. She's only had these for a short period of time. She did have one pretty good spot on one of the straps. I just wanna forewarn you that this is not gonna be an amazing before and after, but you are able to see all of the process and every step that I do, you'll be able to do on your Birkenstock the shoe on the right is going to be the darker shoe. This is the one that I just showed you, right? So it's going to be this shoe here. So the first thing um, that we're going to be talking about are those products to help prevent and maintain. Now, though, we, there are suede cleaners. Suede cleaners um, can be used to clean up some of the stains. They are not going to get everything out. Now, keep in mind that when you use a suede cleaner, they can sometimes discolor your lighter suedes. So keep that in mind. Try and do something that's going to be inconspicuous like on the inside of the shoe here, um, like towards the back. So that way you see if it's going to make any color changes to your suede. Another place where you can check too is gonna to be on the underside of your straps. So after the cleaner, then we have those products to maintain. So we have a couple of different um, brands that we carry in the store. We have the Birkenstock cleaning kit and then we also have um, another brand. Um, it's called Four Seasons. So there is the uh, Nubuck and Suede cleaner that comes with that. And then there's the uh, Weather Guard. So this is going to be like your, your Scotch Guard. This is what you're gonna to do to help prevent the water Water, um, or staining on your on your shoes. Then you have the water and stain repellent from Birkenstock. It comes in your cleaning kit. And then also in your cleaning kit, you're gonna have your cork seal. We also have just this little bottle of cork seal. Um, it comes with a built-in brush, which is really, really nice. Um, it makes easy application. The Birkenstock cork seal is gonna have a sponge applicator, which is cool. You're gonna need some sandpaper or a Nubuck brush uh, to clean the footbeds of the shoes. I don't want you to be intimidated by everything that we've just gone over. It is pretty easy, and honestly, if you're, if you're at bare minimum and you just need one thing to try and clean your suede Birkenstocks, both top and bottom, sandpaper is really, really helpful. If you use the sandpaper on the suede to try and cut some of that surface dirt, it'll work perfectly. Um, and then you can just turn around and use that sandpaper right in the footbed of your shoe as well, which we'll go ahead and show you now. Okay, so our first steps in cleaning our Birkenstocks is always undo your straps. So always open. And the reason why we are taking the straps and opening them is because of two things. One, you want to be able to clean your entire upper strap, right? Because where the buckles sit, you can see here, 
it will leave lines. So we wanna clean that for sure. When it comes to cleaning your straps with your suede brush, nubuck block, any of those types of things, you wanna lay it flat. And then also we wanna get this area that is underneath the buckle because that gets neglected quite often, not just here, but also on the shorter side. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to use the suede cleaner. I'm just gonna spray that. Um, it does have a built-in brush. Some of them will come with a built-in brush on the lid. Those can be kind of aggressive, to be honest with you. I kind of prefer to use something that's a little bit softer because then you can use a little bit more elbow grease without worrying about like tearing up the suede. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and spray it onto the straps. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna start scrubbing in a circular motion. Here I'm just taking the brush dry and I'm trying to remove as much surface dirt as I can. And you can see there's just a little bit of dirt. Again, these were brand new. Mostly you can see it right by the buckle um, where the buckles rested. There is that line of dirt there. So we're gonna try and remove that for sure. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go in with the um, new buck block, which also comes on the back of your Birkenstock brush taking just that little bit of sandpaper. Nothing too um, coarse. You wanna use something that's gonna be a little bit on the medium to finer side. You don't wanna do like, um, no like 80 grit. That's a little too aggressive. You can do like a 120, that's, 120 is pretty healthy. Okay, and there's the spot that I was talking about that she had on her shoe. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to try and get this spot out. I'm gonna use a little bit of the suede cleaner. Now hers aren't as dirty, so sometimes what will end up happening is when the shoe is really dirty and you use the suede cleaner, if you don't use it all over, sometimes just like um, watercolors, um, it'll leave just like a, like a line of wherever that product was used because you didn't clean any other area. So if you just leave it on that one little area and you just only clean that area and they're very dirty, then it will leave a, like a waterline mark. So definitely be mindful. If you're gonna go in with a suede cleaner on a lighter pair, just make sure you do it all over. Um, so that way you're removing as much surface dirt as you can so you're not creating those rings. I'm using the brush that's on the back of the Birkenstock um, suede cleaning brush, which has um, vinyl and metal bristles, which will help to pull up your suede. You don't ever wanna use that brush on like your oiled leathers, um, or you, you definitely don't need to use it on any of your um, synthetics. Um, and you don't wanna use it on your new book either. And the reason why that is is because it will scratch. Okay, so first things first, we wanna open up the shoe. That way we can get in and around all the buckles and then we can also lay the shoe flat so that we have a good working area. In cases like this where I might be using like a suede cleaner, I like to just put like a cut up t-shirt or a rag underneath what I'm doing so that way I'm not making a big mess on my table. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work on the footbed of these shoes. As you can see, she's probably had these for like six months, not, probably not even a year, just based off of the, the, the uppers. Um, either that or she's very careful with them. But you can see her footprint is in there. And all that is, the only reason your footprint is there is because of the oils on your feet and the sweat and the friction. So when all of these things come together, that's when it smooths out and darkens. So basically all we're gonna do is we're just gonna remove all of that surface dirt. So because these are not my shoes, these are somebody else's shoes, I'm going to go ahead and glove up and we're gonna clean up the footbed of her shoes. Um, just so that you know, if ever you send your shoes in for cleaning with us, we don't clean the footbed. And the reason why we don't clean the footbed is for sanitary purposes. We've had shoes that have been sent in to us that smell like urine, um, I, we've had some that have had blood on them. So just as sanitary reasons, we don't typically do this. So this is me showing you how to do this and keeping myself safe at the same time by using the gloves. Her shoes were not an example of what I just said, um, but these are, these are well-worn shoes. And so all that we are doing right now is we're just removing the surface dirt from the footbed. Um, and it's gonna, so it's gonna make them kind of feel a little bit rough again. They're not gonna be smooth, but as soon as you start wearing them again within like the next week, um, that footprint will have shown up again, but it, it, because you removed all that surface dirt, they may be um, less funky in the odor area. Now the heel cup is the area where it's gonna be a little bit trickier to get into. So um, sandpaper is great. You can wrap your finger with it and get in there. Um, it's just gonna be the most difficult area to get into just because of the contours of the, um, of the footbed. Um, but just making sure that you get in there so that way you've got a, you've got a clean slate um, to start walking in the next day, which is awesome. Um, but just have patience, you've got this. 
And now I'm just going through with the sway brush to just, again, bring up some of the nap. I'm also getting out a lot of the dust that I just pulled up with the sandpaper. Also by going over the entire footbed with that brush, it also helps to smooth out any of those striations because some of those areas you're only able really to work in one direction, especially on the sides of the of the footbed. All right, so now that we have the footbed cleaner, I just wanna show you before and after. So again, your shoe will eventually look like this again as soon as you start wearing it, but at least you know that you're walking in a clean shoe. Okay, so now that we have the footbed cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move to the undersides of the straps. Your sweat is gonna be there, lotions, all that kind of stuff. So the same type of thing is gonna happen on not necessarily all of your strap, but on um, a large portion of the underside of your strap. So what I'm using is I'm using a suede cleaning brush and I'm just using the nylon bristles um, along with the metal bristles and I'm just getting in there and I'm I'm just reviving the nap and as I'm doing that, that is also removing a lot of the surface dirt. We're gonna do this to both sides, one shoe and then the other. On this one though, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use that sandpaper. So the sandpaper is gonna do the same thing that we were just doing in the footbed and all that's doing is it's just reviving the nap, removing the surface dirt, removing all that buildup um, and making those feel almost like brand new. They're not gonna be brand new, but they will feel so much better. It's so important using that table um, to stabilize um, to stabilize the shoe. So if you just turn the shoe on its side and you scrub the, or scrub, if you use the sandpaper or the brush while your shoe is flat on the table, it helps a lot. Okay, so these are all of the tools that I'm going to use to prepare my cork. Um, so I just use a pair of cuticle nippers. You don't have to use that. It's just the easiest for me to use. Um, there's just also these, um, these tiny little scissors. You can also use a nail file or some sandpaper. But again, all we're trying to do is we're trying to remove that separation that's happening with the old cork seal. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right into the trimming of the cork. All I'm doing is I am just going and I'm finding anything that is separated from the cork any of the old cork seal that's separated from the cork. Do not cut into the cork. Um, just make sure that you're only just trimming a little bit of old cork seal that is hanging off the side of the shoe. Maybe you've got like some gum or something on the outside of your shoe. This is where you're gonna go and you're gonna remove any physical things that are gonna prevent you from having a really good seal on your cork. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and we've trimmed everything away, I'm just gonna go ahead and those little pieces that I couldn't get to with my scissors or my, my nippers, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the nail file and I'm just gonna smooth that out. Okay, so if you're gonna do nothing else but just go ahead and seal your cork, this is very, very important. You really need to make sure that you clean off any excess um, dirt that is on the cork. You don't want to seal it in. So what I've done is I've just taken a, a household cleaner. Um, you can use 409 Simple Green. I'm using the Melaleuca. I'm just cleaning off the, um, the cork. Now the thing is you don't want to saturate it. That's why I sprayed it on the cloth first. Okay, it's very important that you have a very clean surface to start doing the cork seal on because the last thing that you want to do is to seal your cork and then have a bunch of suede fuzz dirt, dust, any of that kind of stuff. You don't want to have any of that <laughs> sticking to your cork seal that you're about to put on. So just make sure that your area is clean. Make sure that the, sh that the cork is dry, that it feels dry to the touch. That's what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that it feels dry before I go ahead and I apply the cork seal. You want to make sure that you are either going the same direction as the cork. So I'm going to either be going this way with the cork seal or I wanna be pulling it down from the sole material towards the footbed so that if there is any excess cork seal, we're not gooing it into here, if that makes any sense. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask the question in the comment below and I will be happy to answer any questions you have. So I'm going in with the Four Seasons Cork Seal and I love this cork seal because it has a built-in brush. I love it, it makes it so easy to apply. And so I'm just gonna go right along the edge of my strap without getting it on the strap. Don't get the cork seal on the strap. Also, the cork seal only goes on the cork that is exposed, not inside of the footbed where your foot sits, you'll ruin your shoe. So I'm only just applying it to the outside of the shoe. I'm avoiding straps and I'm avoiding the footbed. If you get it on the sole material, it's no big deal. Okay, so on this shoe, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch over to the Birkenstock cork seal. And this is the one that comes in the tube that has a foam applicator on it. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm just using my finger. It, like I said, it can get on the sole material. That's not a problem. Now that we have everything sealed, it only takes about 10 to 15 minutes for it to dry. Um, I like to just double check before I let them dry. Um, 
that I just go through while it's still white and I can see where it is. Um, just make sure that it's not anywhere I don't want it to be. Um, once it is dry, it will be dried completely clear. Um, so, and it will leave a little bit of a, of a shine. Um, I will say that the Birkenstock cork seal is a little bit of a heavier shine than the Four Seasons. So that's also something to consider. And we're gonna leave out for 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so I promised the customer that I would teach her how to apply the protector. So I'm not protecting the ones that you saw in the video, but I am gonna show you how to do it. So um, you're gonna choose one or the other, or you know any type of a protector. So I have the Birkenstock Water and Stain Repellent, and then I have the Four Seasons Weather Guard. So I will do Four Seasons Weather Guard and the Birkenstock Water and Stain Repellent. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna open up your shoes, Either lay the paper towel, or a paper towel, sorry, down in the footbed, and then spray. Or you can flip your shoes. Okay. So shake it. Now, um, this says um, hold the can six to eight inches away, so we're gonna be about here. This is too far, this is too close you want it to dry for 30 to 60 minutes, okay? Um, and you can do one to two coats on here, completely up to you. So again, just making sure that you shake it up real good. And then we're gonna... And I'm just making sure, like I've seen that it's gotten a little bit darker. So I just wanna make it, just make sure it's consistently darker. So I'm just making sure like this area back here wasn't getting as dark as the rest of it. Okay. I don't want to sh saturate it. You don't want to soak it. That's absolutely not what you want to do. And so again, we'll go here, shake it. You should be doing this in a well-ventilated area, not inside like I am right now, but I got to make the video for you. Okay. And so I'm just making sure I get the side pieces really well um, sprayed. I can feel that I haven't gotten it sprayed everywhere. Just a back and forth motion. Making sure you get everything sprayed. Okay, and then we pull this one to the side and we let it sit, let it dry. So I'm gonna do one side and then the other and we're going, this time we're going to use the Birkenstock one. And this one, it, like on here it says check for color fastness before applying. So again, this area here in the, like in the back of the um, middle part of the shoe, so right here, this is always a really good place to test something. Um, this obviously, this pair of shoes is going nowhere, so I'm not going to test it. <laughs> um, but what you would do is you would just only spray it in this little section here. There we go, there we go. So you would just test it right there and then wait, let it dry completely and see what you think, okay? I'm just gonna go for it, just so I can show you how this works. So again, you're keeping your distance, you're just back and forth spraying, okay? You're just this comes out very, very fine. So you can't really see where it's landing. There are some areas where it has, it's gotten a little bit darker because there was a little bit of a, of a stronger droplet that went there or a bigger droplet. Um, and so these are things you kind of want to watch for while you're doing stuff. I prefer the aerosol situation just because you know you're getting like a super good coverage and consistent coverage where sometimes with the with the pump ones, you don't get a super consistent coverage. So, um, so yeah, so that's all that you would do, and then you would let it dry. And like I said, if you want to do a second coat, you do a second coat. But other than that, you're good to go. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that it was helpful and that you learned something new and that your Birkenstocks are looking fabulous. 
please, if you found any value in this video, be sure to subscribe, comment, like, and share. And if you did follow one of my videos, I'd love to see the turnout. If you send us a before and after picture, we'll share it on our YouTube channel. If you have any more questions, be sure to check out any of the other videos that we have linked in all the many places in which they are linked. And then also make sure to leave comments. We're happy to answer any questions that you have. And don't forget to subscribe. See you guys later.